it's Robin and welcome back to Happy at Home. Today I'd like to share with you how I made a no-sew valance for my family room. In my family room I have two rather large windows and when we moved into the house 10 years ago it had a set of wood blinds on each window. They're you know regular wood color, they're super heavy, super good quality and they do a fabulous job of what they're supposed to do. But I just don't like them very much. <laughs> um, they're not my favorite. I don't really care for mini blinds very much. But they're useful. They're practical. I get it. So I've kept them up just because I haven't known what to do with the whole window situation. So lately, the bareness of the whole setup has really been bugging me a little bit. So I decided to do something about it. So that is what I'm going to share with you today. Now on most blinds, you can take, they have the header board along the top of the blind that whole, that covers like the mechanism part of the window covering and it normally just slides right off. So I took that off and to that I attached, using a hot glue gun, a piece of fabric that I had fashioned into a valance and it worked perfectly. So today is I'm going to show you how I went about doing it and how it looks. I think it turned out really, really well. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I used my measuring tape to determine the length that I needed and the width. Now that we've made our measurements, it is time to make a pattern. So what I did was took some lovely wrapping paper with a nice grid pattern on the back and I cut the grid, cut the wall or the paper so that it is as long as the valance that I need. So mine is 53 and a half inches long. So then the next thing I needed to decide was how far I wanted my valance to hang down over the mini blinds. I decided that I want it to be nine inches. So I cut my, my pattern to 10 inches. That gives me a half inch on the top and a half inch on the bottom for seam allowances. All right, once you have your pattern, the shape that it needs to be, you can then add decorative elements to your valence. I have decided to make a little bit of a scallop on both ends. So I made a temp another template with a little scallop on it out of another piece of wrapping paper. So first I need to transfer this onto the piece that I'm going to use as my pattern. My pattern has a little scallop on it. So then I'm going to go ahead and roll this down to the other end because I want to do the same exact thing on the other side. Alright, so now I've got another little scallop on the other side. So now I'm going to take my pattern over to the window and hang it up and see how I like it before I transfer it onto the fabric that I'm going to use. It looks like the design is going to work pretty well and then I'll like it. So now I can take it down and then transfer it onto my fabric. All right, once you have the fabric laid out nice and neat, you can put your pattern down on top of it and I have used a few pins to keep it in place. Um, once that is done, you can either take a pencil and trace along the outside or you can take scissors and just cut along the outside, which is what I'm going to do. Now, make sure before you cut that I already added um, a seam allowance on the top and the bottom, but I did not add any on the side. So I'm going to cut about a quarter inch out from the side of my pattern on both ends of the curtain. That way I can wrap it around the header board and I'll give it a little bit more of a clean finished look. going to do is take it over to the ironing board and we're going to pre-press the edges under so it gives us a nice little seam allowance. Um, but before I do that, I want to 
because of this curve, a lot of times curves are a little tricky when you are pressing them. So what I'm going to do is add just a few little slits with my scissors, just real tiny slits along the curved edge, which will make it lay down a lot nicer when I am turning it over. So now we're at the ironing board. Now the first thing we're going to make sure that we are going to do is lay the fabric wrong side up because we want to make sure that when we're pressing our seams that we're pressing them towards the back of the fabric. So basically what we're going to do is just kind of roll the fabric over to, to um, create a little bit of a seam and then just kind of hold that there and run an iron over it. And that will give us a little bit of a seam. And we're just going to continue to do that all the way around. So the best thing to do is to start at the very top of the curve and make your first um, make your first seam at the very top of the curve like that. Hopefully you can see that. All right. So then what you're going to want to try to do is continue running down just little sections at a time and making it lay nicely in the curve that you want. There we go. So we've got our first little curve here. I'm just going to go over it one more time so it really presses it in there. So let's turn it over and make sure that we have a nice looking seam. Yeah, looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to continue doing the same thing all the way down the length of my curtain valance. So now I've flipped the fabric over and you can see I have a very nicely shaped, um, what do you call it, hem. And the back side looks like this. So we'll take this back over to my desk and we can start gluing it together. Alright, now for the fun part we're going to glue this together. I'm just using a hot glue gun. You can use fabric glue, whatever you want to use. But I will caution you, just use a little bit of glue at a time. It does not take much. If you use a lot of glue, you're going to get, you'll, it'll be easier to see through the fabric and see the glue marks. If you just use a little teeny tiny bit, you will not see it. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to unfold that seam allowance that you ironed. Add just a little seam of glue right down the edge. Let it sit up for a minute and then press it down. And there you go. It stays. <laughs> Pretty cool. So you just do that along the whole length of your seam. So there you go, I've got the whole thing hemmed up with the glue and it's looking pretty good. So now what we need to do is attach it to the header board. Okay, so now we are ready to put all the pieces together. So basically what we're going to do is take the fabric and we're going to glue it to this edge right at the top of the header board. So here's the header board underneath. And we're going to run some glue right along this top edge of the header board. And then we're going to place the fabric up and over onto that. So that it doesn't go back onto the back at all. It's just sitting on this top edge up here where no one will see it. So that is what we're going to do next. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and attached the fabric 
to the header board, making sure curtain is right side down. Then lay the header board on top of it, line it up so that you've got a little bit of edge, and you're just going to add some glue along here, add your fabric and hold it on, press it on, and then move down the length of the board. And then we'll come at the very end, we'll come and do the ends. So I'm going to get started just by adding some glue to the top here. So there you go. I've got my first piece pinned on. So I'm going to remove this so I've got a little bit more room to work with. And you're basically just bending it over just about a quarter of an inch over the top and gluing it to this top piece. Very simple. attached to the header board on the back and all I'm going to do now is work on these edges on the side. So to finish off this corner over here I am going to fold this corner down so it points to the bottom of the header board. It's going to be really hard to see but basically I'm going to fold this down like a present corner like when you're gift wrapping so you have this nice little corner here and then from there, I'm going to wrap it up and over the edge like that. So I'm going to run some glue. I'm going to put a little dot right in here just to hold this corner the way I want it to be so it looks nice and neat. Then I'm going to run some glue just along this edge on the side and glue this up onto that. And then I'll do a little bit of a seam down the side and we'll be done. Alright, so there you go. Now I have a nice side seam right there and the board is attached on the side so it kind of wraps around the header board and so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side all right last minute I decided I'm going to add a little bit of ribbon about two and a half inches down from the top just to give it a little dimension and also so that it will tie in better with my curtain on the opposite side of the room so what I have done is I went to Michael's and I found some ribbon this is just what is it 7 8 inch ribbon and it's in black. The next thing I did was take my pencil and a ruler and hopefully you'll be able to see this but basically I made mark all the way down the length of the curtain where I wanted the top of the ribbon to sit. So basically what all I'm going to do is add some glue right along the ed top edge of the ribbon and glue it onto the curtain itself. When cutting my ribbon, I made sure that I have a little bit of a tail, and at the end, I'll just wrap it around the end, uh, back side a little bit, just so that I don't have any fraying edges of the ribbon when I'm done with my project. So basically, I'm just going to go ahead and start gluing this on, and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so there you go. I have finished it off and this is what it's looking like. And then on the back side, I just wrapped it around and glued it onto my hem that I already had. So now I can take this over to my window and put it up on the window. So here's a look at the finished balance, hung and completed. And I think it turned out very nicely. It does exactly what I wanted it to do by softening the area and I think it turned out very well. I love the fact that if I get bored with this look, I can always remove it from the header board without damaging any of the window blind at all. 
All right, so there you go. My finished no sew valance. I think it turned out really nice. I love that it adds a little softness to the area, but it's not overpowering and doesn't like take over the whole window. So I am really liking the results. Thank you so very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe down below and I will see you again in my next video. Bye.